I'm going to turn this over to Margaret. Thank okay. you for coming. Thank you, Bob, and thank you all for inviting me, uh, inviting us to share about our wonderful library. Um, I want to start with a question, and I bet somebody here knows the answer to this. When were the first libraries started in the United States? Ben Franklin, ben Franklin is correct. Anybody want to hazard a guess at the year? 1731. Now, before there were libraries, how did people access books and who accessed the books? The church. Maybe through church, if, your church, if the church had a little library, yeah. Or personal libraries. Personal libraries, right, right. And then there were groups of men or women who got together and um, formed a reading room. Did you ever hear about a reading room? Yeah. So what they did was they pulled their money to purchase books and share them among the group. And I actually found out when I was doing the research that there was a reading room in the basement of the Patrick County City Hall. Men only, no women allowed. <laughs> so that was way back when, as far as uh, 1895, I believe. But the first library here started with Clarence Perfect. Where have you heard that name before? He was a pharmacist, and he set up a little lending library in front of his Main and Bridge Street Pharmacy here in Martinsville. So in 1913, the Women's Club wanted to start a library, and guess where it was? Right here, which was City Hall. So it was the 20-member Martinsville Women's <coughs> Club, formed a book club, conceived the idea to buy books to be circulated publicly, and donated them to form a library, and located first on the first floor of City Hall, and later on moved to subsequent floors. Then in the 1920s, Patrick County had a book club that had a courthouse reading room for young men then, so that was their second one. Along the way, the Exchange Club got involved to help fund the library. So in 1931, the Martinsville Library Association was formed, first library here in 1936. Uh, the, the WPA and the Community Chest helped fund it. It cost a dollar to join, which would today, in today's dollars, would be $20.24. During the World War, the library closed temporarily, and I could not find the information on how many years it was closed. But for a few, and then reopened in 1936, again supported by the Work Progress Administration and Community Chest. In the meantime, Bassett wanted to form a library. And of course, we're going to, have to be having a lot of little crossover because most of you may know that our library system now consists of five libraries and a bookmobile. So there's going to be some crossover in our dates as we go through this. It opened first in the Stone Block Old Kroger store, and the Bassett Garden Club volunteers and the War Memorial Association raised $70,000. That was a lot of money in that day to form it, but there was a fire in 1939 that damaged that library, and that's it on the left. And they had to move to the old elementary school. In 1946, Bassett tried to revive everything by forming a public library association. W.M. Bassett was president of the Garden Club again. And you'll find as we go through, Garden clubs and the various women's clubs were heavily involved in supporting the libraries in our area. And they raised 
raise $53,000 at that time. In the meantime, Patrick County was looking for to form a library as well. The Young Man's Book Club worked on that over the years. And there was a man named David K.E. Bruce. And he turned out to be um, a, with uh, the bank, U.S. House of Representatives, and uh, he was an ambassador, Mr. Bruce, and he gave the house for the library, and as it went on, he gave 10 locations, purchased and helped uh, make possible 10 libraries around the area, uh, which by the way also included the Franklin County Library. And the Patrick Library was located in that house for a very long time. And how many of you ever heard of Lady Louise Clark? I heard the name. I wish I had stories. I kept looking for anecdotal stories about Lady Louise, but I understand she was greatly loved by the people of Patrick County. And as you see, she served for 31 years. In 1946, Patrick County started with their first bookmobile. There was one, um, an attempted one before that, kind of like an old station wagon, I understand, but again, I could not find a picture of that. But this is the first Patrick bookmobile in 1946, which went around to the one-room schoolhouses in Patrick County. And of course, some of you may remember that our Governor Belisles grew up there. And one of the things he said uh, when he gave a speech a few years ago on behalf of the library was this. Much of my early curiosity about the world beyond my own rural community stemmed from the Patrick County Library's welcome wagon of books. Legend has it that our grandparents' home was the only private residence where the library's bookmobile stopped for book checkouts. So great was the number of books checked out on a monthly basis. And by the way, that was in the Patrick County Enterprise. Okay. Of course, in the interim years, we had World War II take place. And as I said, the library shut down for a little bit. But when it came back, um, we've learned that the Martinsville Citizens organized a Martinsville Memorial Library Association. Elected officers, trustees, appointed committees to solicit donations and buy property. Ms. Bertha Bowles Shackelford, there's a name we've all heard, offered her home at 238 East Church Street as a site for a new public library. It had been constructed by the late Dr. Jesse M. Shackelford. The Andes House on Church Street, and that is a photograph of it, then was purchased for $25,000, and it was remodeled again in 1949. And while enjoyed, it was still considered not suitable for a library. It was considered as a stopgap measure until a permanent library could be designed and built. Dr. Charles Reeves at the time said he considered it just a stepping stone to a larger permanent library in the future. So by 1950, the Martinsville Library had over 6,248 volumes and a circulation of 13,153, which I think is great for that time. And in 1954, the Patrick Library merged with the Franklin County Library. Now we're getting to the time that some of us in this room had been born. Now I didn't grow up here, but I think that some of you did. How many of you parents took you to the library here? Ah, oh, great. 
So you know the history of this library probably better than I do. I mentioned the merger of Franklin and Patrick County, and in 55, the Bassett Public Library dedicated the initial part of their building by the river. $55,000 was B.F. Nolan, there's another name we recognize, was the first library <coughs> from 1955 to 59. It was an unpaid position. And Mrs. G.W., Shirley Bassett, was the second one who started in 1959. And uh, as I alluded to to a couple of you earlier, we've got some gaps in the record. So we put together what we can about this. In 1956 and in 1960, our federal government um, passed the Library Services Act, which provided not only money for construction of libraries, but also for the purchase of books. So twice, the first in 55, and then in 60, that, that uh, federal regulation was renewed. Now we're already up to, to 1961. So the city of Martinsville at that time operated the Martinsville Public Library. And the Martinsville Memorial Public Library Association was formed to raise money for a new building of 7,000 square feet, designed to hold about 73,000 books. And about 150,000 had to be raised, and the Martinsville Exchange Club, the Garden Club, again, were heavily involved, and other civic organizations. Uh, Dr. C.D. Myers, it said, was president of the Board of Trustees at the time, and Mrs. W.L. Panel was very instrumental in the fundraising. The architect um, at the time was uh, Mr. John Timoff, T-Y-M-O-F-F. -F. And the circular building was designed in order to work around that beautiful uh, saucer magnolia tree that's on the back side of the library still. Um, and amazingly, that building won a national award. It was called the Architects Design Honor Award. And nobody knows where that award is, <laughs> I'm afraid. <laughs> nobody knows where it got squirreled away. So the Andes House was torn down in order to build the initial part of the library. And you notice how, different, how it looks a little bit different than the library does today. There was a different entrance and it was a little smaller and we will touch on that in a minute. In 1964, the Martinsville Library was one of 10 recognized nationally for outstanding service to the community by the National Book of the Month Club. And the governor at that time came and attended the ceremony, and uh, the Library Services Act paid for a thousand more books. <laughs> now I have a little story to tell. Um, again, stories were a little hard to, to find as I, uh, as I researched this. But this is a neat one. Elizabeth Long Maniello, it's a nice Italian name, was hired from Ohio to be the first professional librarian by city manager Julian Hurst. Anybody here remember her at all? No? I wasn't even here then, so I don't. But here's a story she told that I happened on when I was just cruising through the internet. Beth and her husband moved here from Ohio, as I said. As director, her first task in 1963 was to plan how the new library would be arranged, then plan to enhance public services. The city manager arranged for Boy Scouts and prisoners to help move the books. Then Beth enlisted the community's help with the grand opening. She visited each of the six elementary schools, and this is a quote directly from her, and asked each principal if they would prompt their teachers to encourage children and parents to come to the opening. She requested that PTA leaders from each school would pour tea and coffee during the event. I did not know, she said, that my prede predecessor would not have gone to the, quote, Negro elementary schools. 
She had not even realized that schools were segregated still then, here. The principal at the School for Black Students asked, are you sure you want me to ask the PTA to help and people to come? She was sure, why well, of course. Women and children from the principal school did come and help with the event and when the event was over, people remarked how well that integrated social event went. So I would suspect that the Martinsville Library was one of the first integrated public places in Martinsville and Hamer County. And I think that's a great thing. Now we have a little summary, and again, we're crossing over across states. Uh, in 1972, it became a Martinsville Henry County Public Library because of the intention to reach out into the county. And Betty Woolrich was the first director with a Master's of Library Science degree. The Martinsville Garden Club also worked on a beautification project that, that year, and even when I came to town, I can remember how the plantings used to look. There's some work that needs to be done now at the Army No. Uh, by the way, in Patrick County, Bill Staples was the bookmobile, bookmobile driver in the 70s. And in those years, too, the bookmobile went not only into Patrick County, but in parts of Henry County. And again, I'm crossing dates. And we'll be going back and forth a little bit. But Franklin County and Patrick County, two of those libraries from Mr. Bruce, just chose to separate again. And Patrick Branch asked to join the Martinsville Henry County Public Library and did. The National Association of Counties awarded uh, the Martinsville Henry County Public Library an improved services to citizens award, and again, Nobody associated with the library has a clue as to what happened to that award. Sorry to say. By the way, the uh, first three cards issued when the Collinsville branch joined the library in uh, August of 1974 went to Irene Sapp, Jack Dalton, and Nora Jenkins. And I remember Irene Sapp and Jack Dalton myself. I'm not sure you all do. So in, in 1974, they were talking about becoming the Blue Ridge Regional Library System. And then the National Association of Counties side of Henry County, as I mentioned, for offering improved services. So in May of 1975, the city of Martinsville, Henry, and Patrick County signed an agreement for a three-jurisdictional system, the Blue Ridge Regional Library, and you see our mission there, which is still our mission. The mission of the Blue Ridge Regional Library is to provide free, friendly service and access to timely materials that educate, enrich, engage, and entertain the entire community. And that's exactly what the library does. So, the library is transitioning over these years into becoming more of a community center. It was no longer just a repository for books. So in 1984, there was a campaign to expand the Martinsville Main Library. It was dedicated September 28, 86. And of course, that's how it looks today because there's that neat little chair out front that was given us by the Al Trusa Club. In 1986 also the Friends of the Library was formed and that organization still exists and still does book sales at least twice a year that help support uh, the Story Times mm -hmm. summer reading program which I'll talk about in a minute and, um, and other programs to help supplement um, what we get through budgetary means. And by the way, the budget is provided still predominantly locally by the three jurisdictions, as well as uh, getting state and federal money. I'll go ahead and let you know at this point that the, uh, 
The state and federal money is completely dependent on what the localities provide. If the localities cut, the state and federal money goes down. And there have been cuts across the years, especially within this 21st century. In the meantime, there was a Labor Day flood and the Bassett basement genealogy materials were soaked, so they had to try to dry them out and preserve them. And study and work began on the Ridgeway branch, 1987 to 1990. That involved Elizabeth Wood Lester, Ruth Pace, Pat Walmsley, Sandra Cox, Mary McGee, Dr. Robert Mason. They raised $500,000 dollars for that. At the same time, the addition to the Bassett Library there by the river was also completed. And again, along those same years, those were busy years, weren't they? <coughs> along those same years, Patrick County was raising money to have a permanent library. The Great Expectations Fundraiser 1987, which included the expansion and the uh, J.E.B. Stewart Historical Center. <coughs> and that opened June 9th in 1991. So the Patrick Board of Supervisors were involved in that. And so that new branch library was <coughs> built at 116 West Blue Ridge Street in Stewart, along with the museum. And as, it, as we said, they're open in June 9th. Now in June 1st, 1992, the Bassett Public Library joined the Blue Ridge Regional Library System as the Bassett Branch Library. Also in the meantime, the Collinsville Branch Library moved. So they moved various places and storefronts in Collinsville. And some of you here may remember where they were located <coughs> for the current location. Also in that time period, Betty Woolridge retired and Ellen Bell become, became the director of the Blue Ridge Regional Library System. In June of 1993, the bookmobile used, that used to run through Henry County made its final run after 20 years service, moved to Patrick County to replace the previous uh, bookmobile we had there. And by the way, Larry, uh, Gary Clifton was the driver who is now the branch manager at the Patrick County Library. The Ridgeway Garden Club won a state award for their centennial flower garden at the Ridgeway branch. In 1995, the library's reading program, which had, well, had uh, recruited and trained volunteers to read to children in the library, in the hospitals, <coughs> in daycare centers, wherever, they won a Governor's Community Service and Volunteers Volunteerism Award for the state of Virginia, 1995. 1996, the Martinsville branch offered its first public internet workstation in the second half of that year. And then in 1998, the third Patrick Foot Mobile was uh, funded. That was led by Roy Adams, Brigadier General Rob Kenny, and the library board began fundraising campaign to enable the Bassett branch to move across the street, which is what this is a picture of, and that's as the Bassett branch stands right now. And the genealogy portion of the library, which kept on growing and growing and growing as, as families donated their materials, arrange, um, that remained in the original building. So there was support at that time from Bassett Furniture, Stanley Furniture, Patrick Henry Bank, and the Henry County Board of Supervisors. <clears throat> so it was in November of 1998 that the Bassett branch moved into what had been a women's clothing store. Involved in the Bassett Historical Center's uh, collection that was growing were people um, 
Good. Here are some other names that you may have recognized. Mrs. Effie Nolan, Mrs. Shirley Brightwell Bassett, Mrs. Leela Adams, and Mrs. Martha Jane Clark. And of course, the brick building that beside the river was renamed the Bassett Historical Center. In, 19, in May of 19, uh, 2019, the next bookmobile for Patrick County began serving. And in 2000, the library systems literacy program received the President Clinton's Points of Light Award. And some of us remember Bill Patterson. How many of you remember Bill when he did, had, ran the literacy program years ago? Okay, I remember that from probably taking my children in at that time. Okay. So there's some other su summary of what I was just talking about, the various awards and the movements that took place among the libraries. Hal Huebner became the director in 2000. Collinsville moved December 21, Family Place Library. This was a little interesting thing I discovered. So the library, Martinsville Library um, applied for and was awarded a um, Family Place Library Award because it, uh, this is an organization that recognizes libraries for becoming a community hub uh, that places emphasis on child and family development, which our library still does. And lo and behold, when I went on the Family Place Library website, I found out that we're still members. <laughs> and I think we didn't even know it. So that's a very cool thing. In probably late 2011, <coughs> the Bassett Historical Center left the system, and that was kind of a sad day, uh, to say the least. And we don't go into that at all. It's a different director at that time. And then we have Collinsville moving again to what is now its current location in a storefront. Um, and it's a 2,800 square feet, very good space, larger than, um, than Bassett or Ridgeway libraries. And in, 20, in 2001, Ellen Bell retired, and as I've already mentioned, Hugh Hubner, Hugh Hubner Hubner, I believe, uh, became the new director. There were budget cuts to the library in 2002. In 2005, a new bookmobile fund was established for Patrick because that, that bookmobile was getting old and starting to break down regularly. And I remember when I came on the library board in 2017, that was a reg fairly regular thing that was occurring, that the bookmobile was having to be repaired. <coughs> In 2012, um, Rick Ward became the new director, and that was the start of level funding for the library, which I'm going to tell you about in just a few. Rick was formerly the uh, branch manager um, and reference librarian um, at Patrick County. And so as you see, we've got a gorgeous picture here of the new fifth Patrick County Bookmobile. Fundraising for that, $185,000. Uh, Gerald Belisles uh, spoke at the dedication. It was delivered on March 27, 2019. That bookmobile, by the way, can hold 3,000 items and has 100 visits per month. It serves six public elementary schools, one private school, Appleby, Apple Tree Development Center, and goes to Ararat, Claudeville, Price, Meadows of Dan, and Woolwine. And then in, uh, along the way, we, uh, the uh, library system sponsored the Joytus Resolution event. This is a research vessel. Did any of you come to that at the time in 2018, 2019? You missed out. That was a lot of fun. So uh, we were the first library in the country to get that exhibit. And uh, there was an exhibit uh, in partnership with the Virginia Museum of Natural History and the, all the libraries in the system. 
and uh, it was talking about the research that this vessel does into, uh, they take cores from uh, the bottom of the ocean uh, to, to study the environment, and it was really fascinating, and by the way, you can still follow them on Facebook, which I do, so that was really cool. So we're up to today. People do not realize that we have over this amount of catalog collections. That's not even counting the facility and many other things. These are just the things that can be cataloged. Value, as you see, almost $7 million between the five libraries and the bookmobile. Last fiscal year, we had 43,373 cardholders, 174,473 circulation. Digital circulation, 22,953. 127,574 visits. This year, up until December, we had over 85,000 in uh, circulation, 79, almost 80,000 in visitors, up 5.15% over the year to date last year. How many of you here have heard about the Summer Reading and Feeding Program? Ta -da. Our library system had one of the first summer reading and feeding programs working with the schools with the Department of Agriculture. Uh, one of the first ones in the whole state of Virginia. There had been summer reading programs before, but this is kind of like a summer reading program on steroids. Seven weeks, nine sites. In 2023, there were between the uh, preschoolers, children, teens, the attendance was 481 and 134 adults. And anyone who's ever taught school or substitute taught or even taught at church knows that there can be a, what's called a summer slide of children during the summer backsliding a little bit with regard to their reading ability and their comprehension because of lack of stimulation. So this program performs a really essential service. Today our libraries have free Wi-Fi around the clock, patron workstations, children's computers, adult computers. Martinsville and Patrick branches have a parent-child workstation, privacy pods. It offers, we all offer copying, printing, faxing, scanning, streaming services, books, DVDs, CDs, periodicals, reference books, microfilm databases, a seed library, literacy bilingual health, tutoring spaces, Head Start teacher support, all in a safe and inclusive, free, public meeting rooms for civic groups. There are art and history displays. During COVID, who knows what our libraries offered when the library was shut down and then even uh, until it could reopen fully. Who knows what the library had to offer then? Books. What did they do, Reeves? Uh, delivery. Delivery. Outside delivery. Curbside delivery at all the libraries. Right. <coughs> One of the patrons said when the library reopened in 2021, what a thrill it was to walk into my library this afternoon and see your smiling faces there. I want to thank you and the system for all your work over the last year of keeping the books, CDs, movies, audiobooks flowing out the back door to me. It was a great way you always gave out flyers about new releases and published in the paper. I never encountered a grumpy employee in all this time, even in cold or wet weather. Thanks. I think you handled a difficult year with smarts and caring and dedication. So I just wanted to show you a few current pictures. These are all pictures that have been taken in the past few months. So of course, story times are a big thing. There are preschool story times, children's story times. We have a story time coming up this coming Saturday called Catter Day, when the children can read to a cat. How many of you have ever heard of the fact that sometimes a shy child will read to an animal, to a cat or dog, 
when they are too scared, too shy to read to another person. Have you ever heard of that? No. Arts and crafts, movement, the various libraries. Bingo, game days, back to school events, food drives for the community. Arts and crafts, more of all kinds. If you have a craft you'd like to learn, tell your librarian. They can probably set it up for you. Computer and job resume and search support. This is so crucial. We all realize that people that are in lower income do not have a computer. Uh, may not, even if they have a computer and have internet, they don't have a printer. And oftentimes we still have plenty of folks that need a basic computer class to know how to do it and get help with job resume. And in fact, I was a little surprised the other day. I, uh, one of my last jobs was with the, uh, was with the workforce center, what used to be the VEC. And the gentleman who is a retired bank examiner who is our administrative assistant for our library system told me that I actually helped him with his resume when he applied for the job that he has had in recent years. So that was kind of cool to learn. Wreath making is really popular, by the way, when that comes up. Seasonal crafts and events. I love the frosting on the young man's cheek. Steam things, Lego and other things. Of course, we know that stands for science, technology, uh, engineering, arts, and math, steam. And those classes go on on a regular basis in all of our libraries. By the way, our Ridgeway Library is a polling place. There are book clubs and contests, and there we have a crocheting group, which is still going on. Trivia nights, family movies, library scavenger hunts, coloring book day, national ice cream day, <laughs> uh, classes and manners. We might have some people that we'd like to refer to that class, might we? <laughs> teen book club and young adult programs. There are teenagers who use the library. <laughs> and there are partnerships with uh, the Virginia Museum of Natural History and the YMCA. You can get day passes, free day passes, to those organizations through your Blue Ridge Regional Library. Martinsville Senior Citizen Partnership. Partnerships with the programs in town that serve developmentally disabled adults. Health and nutrition classes, seasonal classes. Um, uh, a recent books and treats event. It was a literacy event. Uh, they gave away a th over a thousand books and treats were distributed. Sign language, job seeker words, quotes I mentioned, college courses, accessing all kinds of electronic sources, uh, government forms with one click instead of you sitting at home and searching and searching and searching trying to find something. Um, there's a, there are wonderful lists through your library um, website and with the help of your librarians to find those things. This is tomorrow. We, have, we kicked off last year uh, a Bassett expansion and renovation project. And afterwards, you're welcome to come and look at not only some of the pictures that I brought, um, but also I have a model. And, um, and there is a, uh, also a large color picture there of what the finished product will look like. That little library has outgrown itself. Um, <coughs> Karen Barley, the branch manager, often has 40 children in their little meeting room, which was meant for 12 adults. So they're wedged in there like sardines. And there are times she, she's had to turn people away from the program. And uh, so, some, sometimes, of course, she strives when they can to, uh, to schedule a second program to make sure they accommodate everybody. But that little library is loved, as are all the libraries and all the librarians. By the way, we did survey in 2017, and the board did a survey last year. And let me tell you that way over 90% of the people who respond to the survey uh, say that the Blue Ridge Regional Library and the staff offer excellent services. And the last few percent say good. 
I think we had one disgruntled customer out of 717 <laughs> um, surveys. So this, I am always, and I think all of us on the, on the Board of Trustees and the Foundation, love to brag on the staff. They go above and beyond every single time. They are marvelous, so creative, and so hardworking. And you're really getting services from this library system way in excess of the funding that we actually receive. You're getting services equivalent to a large city library system. And that's no exaggeration whatsoever. The Bassett, what this Bassett uh, is going to, the Bassett expansion is going to provide for us, let me get my right sheet of paper so I don't miss anything, there will be increased patron participation, um, I'll quit tripping over my time, I promise, uh, in the programming at the library, which is programming every single week, preschool, school, and uh, school age and family literacy. The summer reading and feeding program is well attended there. Year-round educational enrichment and entertaining activities inclusive of all ages and groups. And by the way, your library system is one of the most democratic places you can go in this community. Everyone is made to feel welcome. Residents with handicapping conditions, senior adults, teens and young adults, and outreach to communities that are still uh, underserved in our library system. We need your support. In 2012, the three jurisdictions started with level funding. That lasted 10 years. Let's think about that for a minute. 10 years of level funding. That means we've been digging a little hole every year. Some positions have gone unfilled. Right now we don't have a reference librarian. We have lost a couple of librarians who had Master of Library Science degrees. They could get more money elsewhere. Our the board and the director have to work against salary compression. Our branch managers are making equal to or less than an entry level school teacher, regardless of how long they've been with the system. We need your help. We did get a five, we worked very hard, we got a 5% increase finally last year, fiscal year. This fiscal year, level again. This coming fiscal year, we're asking for 5% more because we've got minimum wage going up and in order to avoid compression, we need to give that increase to our full-time and long, longer-term employees. So we need your support. We need you to contact your district representative, wherever you live in Martinsville, Henry County, if anybody's here from Patrick County. We need your help to say support the library budget. And I can tell you right now, I know we already know we're going to be asking for some more things next year. We had two of our branch managers have to go out on medical leave this year. That was a big hole for a few months of, of our director having to shift people around and try to have adequate coverage. We're asking this year, one of the things we're asking for this year within the budget is our two part-time positions, one for Ridgeway basically, and one for Bassett. Because there are times it's those two small libraries that there was only one library staff person there by themselves. In this day and time, that is not a good idea. So your board of trustees are working very hard and we need your help, we need your support. Look at the support. You heard about the support in the past from leaders in the community. That's what we need again, and from the citizens of the community. The library is not an anachronism. It is a vital, essential service to the residents of Martinsville and Henry County. 
that is not being filled by any other organization. Some other people are doing a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Altruism Club, Club is doing some wonderful things with their little bitty, lib little, little bitty libraries outside. We know Spencer Pinson Center is doing a good job out there. Um, but we need you. We need you. And so please contact. You know, take, take the five minutes to make a phone call. Send an email to your representative and say, please support the library budget. And of course, use your library. By the way, if, in case anybody here uh, does not have a library card, I brought the application. So you can get one from me afterwards. Go on the library's website, find us on the Facebook page. If you're using Facebook, like that library Facebook post every time. Our wonderful program coordinator, Leander Gravely, um, posts something almost every day. And so like it because you know the way Facebook works. If you like something, then it helps generate the fact that it is put out there over and over and over again to reach more people. Share what's happening in our library with your families and friends. Bring them to visit. Tell your elected officials, like I said, support our annual funding request. And ask for information about the Blue Ridge Regional Library Foundation, which I can tell you about that afterwards. If you'd like to know, we're having to try to kind of rebuild the foundation ourselves. We lost several people during COVID to um, age and illness and taking care of a family member, and a couple of them moved away, so we are in the process of rebuilding the foundation uh, so that we can build up. We know, for example, right now that if the, if the HVA system went out on the Martinsville Library, that's over $200,000. And that would just about, uh, you know, take out our capital fund. Um, so uh, we need to build up that foundation, uh, which began in 2014. So if you want more information, ask me, ask Reeves Coleman, who's a, who's a real asset to the board. We're thrilled to have him. We've got an active board now and, uh, and people that are working very hard. So again, we ask you to support your Blue Ridge Regional Library. Do you, if you have any questions, ask. I will try to answer them. If I don't know the answer, I'll tell you so. Yes, ma'am. Will they be tearing down the existing building in Bassett to build a new one? Yes. They'll tear it down. Yes, it would be an, well, not entirely. There would be some, um, let me back up to that picture and I can show you. Okay, um, let's see, you said this little bitty bitty works. There we go. There's gonna be drive through. That would be the first library with a drive through. Wouldn't that be cool? And that would help serve people who have some disabilities, parents who's got a sleeping child in the car, that would be really cool, so we hope to do that. Uh, as a part of the renovation, uh, there would be new offices. The workspace in that library is pathetic, to tell you the truth, from poor staff. And uh, even the uh, branch manager's office is piled up with, with things because there's just an insufficient storage space. Um, there will be a new teen area. The uh, uh, computer area would be consolidated. Right now, there's a computer here and a computer there. Uh, this part, um, this part will be a meeting room to house uh, up to 50 people. Now, Martinsville has a good meeting room. Collinsville has a good meeting room. Bridgeway has a good meeting room. Uh, Patrick County's meeting room is very small. Uh, Bassett's meeting room, as I already alluded to, is tiny. You know, 50. 50 kids, 40 kids in a 12 person room. So the, the children's area would be doubled in size. And I, if I remember correctly, it'd be over this way. There will be doors, so these doors here, and the interior doors would be locked. So the community of Bassett could use that big portion of the building at night. Uh, I don't know if you know that the other places in Bassett that have meeting areas, they all charge. None of them are free. The library meeting rooms are always free for you to use. Any club or civic organization, all you have to do is call, see, see if it's available on a given time, uh, you know, sign up. And you can hold a meeting at your library uh, 
the other libraries now during regular library hours, which of course are posted on the library website. So uh, uh, there will be a good workroom for the staff. That will be a huge asset for them. So we're really excited about this plan. Uh, the architect that drew this uh, has designed over 26 libraries, and in fact, he was one that just designed the uh, renovation of the Gretna Library in Pennsylvania County. So 2.25 million is what we're trying to raise. We've got 77,000 in the bank right now, uh, designated for Bassett. Uh, the foundation has 45,000 uh, left after the bookmobile, basically. Uh, 13,000 of which is undesignated. So we've got a long ways to go. Uh, we, we have been uh, awarded a pledge of 396,184 from um, the from Harvest Foundation, but that is an end cap uh, pledge. I've learned all kinds of things in the last five years, which means that we have to raise the rest of the money and then we get that. We have, uh, we applied last fall and received $10,000 from Women in Philanthropy. We received $5,000 from the Community Foundation serving Western Virginia. Um, this week, <laughs> we, we, did, we did a preliminary uh, one-page request to Appalachian Power, uh, and that's just to let us know if we're allowed to apply. And so uh, I just, just dropped into my mailbox <laughs> this week. Uh, and so tomorrow I'll be working on filling out an initial form. And after the initial form, then there will be a long form, probably like, uh, like uh, the one for Harvest, to apply for $20,000 from Appal Appalachian Power Company. And then uh, West Piedmont Planning District Commission and the county are working with us uh, absolutely invaluable help because I do not know legalese, I do not know uh, political talk, um, but are applying to the Appalachian Regional Commission and we're asking for $700,000 from them. Now, when, when three of us sat in on the um, virtual meeting about that a month ago, we learned that they've never given money to a library and we said, well, we can be the first. Um, because the library has an economic impact because of everything we do has to do with literacy, right? And those people that are getting jobs that come back and tell us every month, I got the job because you helped me with my resume. And while the library doesn't pay taxes because we are a quasi-government, non-profit organization, Nevertheless, the people who get jobs are paying their taxes, and the liter all the literacy work makes a difference in terms of raising the educational level of our community, which we know has been an ongoing process. I remember what it was like when I came here in 72, um, when I was a social worker, as the percentage of people who didn't even have a high school diploma. And that has improved greatly over the years, but still a ways to go. So there is an economic, impact to what the library does for the community, as well as, as I said, enriching and entertaining folks, and all, all for free. The only thing the library can charge for are, is supplies, and uh, when they're doing, a, let's say, doing one of those wreath-making make, crafts, uh, as one example, then, you know, those that are able can pay for their supplies. That's it. So the, you get it for free, but it costs a lot of money. And that's why we need your support with the three jurisdictions. Because again, the state and federal governments say the responsibility for the library remains with the locality. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Virginia. Anybody else have a question? Yes, ma'am. How would you say outreach has been for the younger Outreach for the younger ones? Yes. Um, we have good attendance. Thank you for coming. We have good attendance at the uh, preschool and 
school age after school and summer programs. So um, that's good and with the teens. Additionally, the homeschoolers use the library heavily. And we do have a significant percentage of homeschoolers around here. And they use it. Yeah. Um, outreach is an ongoing thing. Um, and uh, the, for example, the, uh, just as all the, library, all the <laughs> branch managers do it and the librarians do it, but the, uh, our children's library at um, Martinsville, uh, Janet Boucher goes out to daycare centers. They go out to daycare centers in Patrick County, too. So they're uh, reaching out all the time. And then um, some of the programs that have developmentally disabled adults bring their adults in. They have their own version of story time and crafts, and they love it. I've, I've observed the one at the Collinsville Library, and boy, do they have a great time. Yeah. Breach, you want to add anything? Uh, sure. I will just be the harbinger of doom. I'm kidding, but I will just say this. Uh, if we don't get behind the library very soon in the next four years, the, the budget issue is a real problem. I mean, it, and if we don't, we don't make it a big deal, but the way that uh, Rick and his staff uh, have manipulated the budget to make it work is amazing. I mean, yeah. I, I can tell you more and I've sat in these, and we have a couple of gentlemen now that are working on our budget constantly to make it work. And I, you know, I shudder to say this, and I hate to say it, but I just, we never feel like we get a real, uh, that, you know, well, you're going to get level five. That's all you need. That's all the library needs every year. And you know, we got five percent, and you would have thought we asked for five billion dollars. I mean, it's just it's astounding. <laughs> so please, when you see the, the the call come out from Margaret or the library, it, it's real. I mean, I've been doing I, this is my second tour on the uh, on the library board, and it, it was not as brave as this one is, and it's because we are facing the uh, the new, sal the new salary for, uh, that's coming up with the, uh, I'm losing my mind. Uh, the new minimum wage as of January 1st. Wage, uh, and, and we have to change things around in the library. So I just want to reiterate that. So once you see, uh, mm -hmm. once you see this come up, please know, please talk to your board of supervisor, your city council person. And if you're from Patrick County, whoever uh, represents you there. I mean, uh, but, but please, the library is a wonderful place. My family's used it. Uh, I've used it. I've, I've, I've used it. Use it. I, I love it so much. But the programs that are that you see it. Margaret did such a wonderful job today. But it, it just it's one of the diamonds of, of our area. When we're trying to sell houses and bring people here. You talk about the library. You talk about the museum. You talk about Piedmont Arts. You talk about the Dick and Lily Trail. And you talk about you know all sorts of things that are here. And the library is one of them. You know we're lucky to have. <coughs> Uh, a library system that is so live and vibrant. Uh, and if you haven't gone to a program that Leander's done, I'd shame on you. Because one thing Martin did tell you is that when during uh, COVID, they had uh, parking lot parties uh, that where where they would yeah, give good, away. Good point, Reeves. They gave away, you know, Halloween, Christmas. Leander made sure the kids were covered. I mean, it, 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 it just was amazing. How he did it, I don't know. He's got, and his budget is minuscule, but yeah. he finds and makes things work. And that's how you're supposed to do things. But they extended the Wi-Fi out into the parking lot so kids could come in. And do they didn't have computers. Could come, so they could come sit in the parking lot and do their homework. And it's still there, I believe, right? Yeah. So still, I mean, my, my office sits and overlooks mm -hmm. and you see cars sitting there all out. You know, it's, and the information you got on, for example, the Hoopla program, that was added during COVID. Uh, because the previous, the other program under, under uh, Libby Overdrive was mostly books. But the Hoopla program includes music, movies, all kinds of media. And, um, and uh, that's not a cheap program that the library is paying for. And they added that. 
and all. What's been neglected, as Reeves and I know, which I also didn't touch on, was, was facilities. And we're fixing, we just, the library board just voted to start upgrading bathrooms in the facilities, and Martinsville and Ridgeway will be first. Uh, we've got carpet that's 25 years old. You know, you can scrub it and have it professionally clean. That's not, that's not what it ought to be still. And so we've got, we've got some big work ahead of us because the salaries had to be paid, just like the school system, salaries are the biggest chunk. And, and so the salaries have to be paid, the books have to be bought. In recent years, they buy so many books during the year and they reserve some of that money at the end of the year in case of emergency. And if they don't spend it, then they can buy some more books. You know, that's not the most efficient way of doing things. But just if, like we're saying, and I'll, I'll shut up. Yeah, no, <laughs> that's fine, Reeves. It, it is, if you, when you see this, remember what Margaret Reeves said. If the, uh, yeah, the but the, your library is wonderful. Yeah. And it yeah. is vital, and again, some of the most creative, hardworking people I've ever seen. So come visit your library and support us. Please. Any other questions? You're welcome to look at other pictures that um, we find, and Mr. Phillips found a few. And, um, and if you need to take extra of some of the information you got, I've got more up here. But thank you for coming today. Thank you for listening and being so attentive. I know this was a long program, but I wanted to tell you not just about yesterday, but what's happening today and tomorrow. Thanks so much. Yeah.